Hey, what's going on guys of that one will be fine and welcome back to the part number five so in this video i'm going to explain to you how we can add the racket so the few things that you make sure you have your uh, node server running on your system so i have already run my npm start on uh, for my node application right and uh, so we have a list of data and you know, on based of the click of the added button so this is going to load a new component for us and we have to populate all the data related to that id and we can update that so that's what we are going to do so the first thing that i'm going to do in this video is that i need to create the very first component so i have a server running already so I just want to open up another one and let's create here a component first so ngc for component and i need to create here a component with the name of added uh, let's give it the name of added employee and press enter so this is going to generate the uh, the component for us for the added component all right, so there we go. So we have the uh, added dash imply. So if I go to my app.module.ts file, so this is gonna already load it inside my declaration, import my declaration. Now here I need to uh, pass the ID. So what I'm gonna do here is just right after here, let's give it the uh, path first. So the path that I need here is, let's give it the name of path, which is the added slash and the colon id so basically this id is the id that is passed to the url and this is going to load the individual record so next we have to define the component and the name of the company in my case which is the added employee component all right so that's fine for, for, from this side now because we have to display we have list of data and we have the added button there so i need to go to my employee.component.html file and that's where we have to define the router link all right so i define here router link equal to and uh, let's give it the name of the route which is added slash and we have to pass here the id so the id which is imply dot underscore id so basically the loop of the data the, all the data which we are getting we need to find the id so just simply define that here and saves it and let's go back to the um, uh, to the page and there you see on the top of it we have the added slash and the uid which is the underscore uh, underscore id right so now we have to uh, we have we are actual reaching to the added dash employee now we have to do a bit few changes inside the add, added employee component so let's go inside the added dash employee dot component dot html just remove everything from here and we need to do almost very much identical thing the things inside uh, if you have uh, watched my previous video we have to just copy every single thing despite um let's create just copy that all and paste it everything here and just remove the validation from here for now all right and uh, you can add the validation if you want but i uh, just want to make sure video a little bit we can do that stuff in the, in the in the other part of the video but just for now i just want to show you how we can update the racket and definitely you can um, we can we can do it in the la later part of the video but i just want to show you so we can have no more errors for now all right so we defined the form control name we have defined the form group and we just want to change the name of the method method to update data all right and just saves it okay so now we have name email salary and the summit so if i just go to my page and definitely it says that property update data does not exist so let's go to the uh, um, to the added dash employed component and define here the method which is in update data so update data and saves it and i also need one more thing here is I need to define the uh, few things. Uh, first thing that I need here inside matted imply, I need to define here the router activated route. I'm gonna explain to you what I'm gonna do with the activated route, which is very essential because we need to get all the racket with the help of router. So I'm gonna define here activated route from the uh, angular slash router. And next we have, I also need to define here the form control for the reactive form uh, for loading the data. So import form control, and I also need the form group. Plus I need the, uh, okay, we can do that later. Okay, so from angular slash forms, all right? That's fine. 
and we have defined the activated route and we need to define the toaster service as well so i'm going to do use that too so toaster service and that's going to load from the uh, ng x dash toaster all right so that's fine so as usual i have some issues with the spelling so this should be toaster service right and we have to define the service as well which is very essential so let's define the employ um, employ service uh, yes yeah, fine so employ service from the source app and service slash and the employer service right okay so let's go inside your constructor and define all the uh, all the uh, part and part of these services and and toaster so private let's define the service so this should be employ um, service and employ service right so next we have to define here the route as well so private route and let's give it the name of activated route and we also need to define here the toaster so private and the toaster and let's give it the name of uh, toaster service right all right, so we are good to go now. We need to define the ID on based of the condition. So for that, we have to play some uh, very important thing. We need to get the individual employee ID. So you can do a, a different thing. If I need to pass the ID, we can simply pass here this dot ID equal to this dot route. So whenever we are route to the end of the page, so this is gonna get the uh, snapshot dot params dot id so basically with the help of that we're gonna get the id so i'm gonna define on top of it so just define the id so this this will bring us the id so if i go to log and define this dot id and saves it go back to the uh, still it says the form does not exist yeah we have to define here the form as well so i just want to go under need the uh, variables and define here so form equal to new form group form group and we have to pass our different fields we have name so let's define here new form group and uh, we have to also define the few more fields so name colon new form group and make this empty and um, i also need to define here the email and the salary so let's define here name email and the salary this should be small all right so uh, this should be form control sorry about that so this should be form control because form control comes inside the form group right so this all should be form control and that's fine all right now if i go back to the chrome and check the uh, that there is no any error that's fine okay so if i, I if I, you see here we we have an id just the id that we passed on top of it we can easily see now if i just want to add a district cut and now we have different id right so on base of the url we have different data so let's uh, pass this data inside uh, populate the data inside the text field so for that i need to define here a method inside the uh, uh, just underneath the ng on in it let's define here we have to get the data so we have to use we have to work with the uh, get data api so first we need to define the get data api inside our service so let's go inside the employee.service.ts file and populate the data so data employee.service.ts now we need the individual data on base of the id so let's go and fetch the get data by id 
And let's pass here the uh, ID. And we have to define this dot. Uh, actually, we need to return it. So return this dot HTTP client dot get request. And the URL that we have, I just want to copy this URL from the from here and we have to change a little bit things. So because we are passing the ID, so slash API slash employ, we don't we are not adding the so we are just want to remove this add. You can see those API from your Node.js application that you created. So no worries for that. So ID, right? So we pass the ID and let's gonna do and check this out inside our get data method. So this dot and the name of the service. So this dot data service, employee service and the name of the method, which is get data by ID and we have to pass here the id so let's pass this dot id and this id is actually coming from the uh, snapshot dot params dot id right so as you have seen on the console so we pass the id we have to subscribe it and we have to pass here the response so let's define the uh, response uh, so i just give it the uh, oh, oops it should be inside here so this dot data which I need to define on top. So let's go here, data any. So this dot data service are, yeah, I first have to define the data inside the response. And let's also do here, this dot employ um, equal to, um, actually this dot employ I don't think so we need that. Okay, just remove that for now. All right, so we have the response and um, we have to define here this dot form equal to new form group and we have to now populate the data. So what I'm gonna do, you can easily grab from top here, right? So just simply copy that all and paste it inside the get data method and despite of having that, we have to define the value. So this dot employ. Um, yeah, you can do one more stuff here that you can define here the model. So let's define the model down to the to the um, on top of it even. So employ equal to new employ. All right, and with the help of this employ. We are gonna get the uh, record. So this dot employ equal to um, this dot employ equal to this dot uh, uh, this dot data. All right. So now we can get the ID. So this dot employ. So this dot employ dot name now if i go back to the browser and just reload that nothing works we have to actually call this function inside the ng on in it so this dot get data all right actually what's going on here okay now it saves it and see and now you could see that now the data is populated right that that's fine Okay, so just do the same trick for the this dot employ dot email as well as for the this dot employ dot salary, right? So now we can easily populate all the data. Now the next thing that we need here is to call the update data API. Now for this, I need to go to my employee.service.ts file and now let's define here the uh, update data. All right, so just underneath that, I'm gonna define here update data again we have to pass the id and the data that we need to update and uh, we have to again return it so it's very much identical to the ad so I just want to grab this all here and change the api which is slash api slash employ slash update and we are also passing the id so i need to do a few things here so the id that we are going to pass we just concatenate that and the data right 
So now we have two things here, the ID and the data. So just like inside my uh, method for the update data, we have to again call the service first. So this dot data service, uh, employee service. And uh, we have to define here the method, which is update data. Now, now two things are coming inside here. You can also pass this dot ID if you want. We can also pass here um the snapshot i think so that's fine if i use pass here simply the id and all as well as just pass this dot form dot value we are also passing the data and plus we are subscribing it so let's just simply pass here subscribe and we have to pass the response here and let's do and check this out inside here with the help of toaster so we pass, we get the data this dot data equal to response now we are using here toaster as a service so let's see uh, as a message so this dot toaster dot success we have to pass here two things so the first one has to be the code so json dot stringify we are, we are going to do the very much similar thing that we did for the adding the data and you can you understand how we can actually get the uh, objects so this dot data dot code and we also gonna pass here the uh, message so it's json dot stringify and let's pass here this dot data dot code all right and if you guys are not sure from where this actually is coming this should be message actually so i'm gonna still show you in a little in a, in a little while so we have to define two things here so the first thing that i need is a timeout which i need only for one second Plus we need here the uh, progress bar, right? So progress bar should be true. All right, saves it. And I hope we are good to go. So yeah, I, I want to show you again from where these objects are coming from. So I'm gonna close my server for the node application. Just want to open up on my, on my VS code and um, already it's open up. So basically we are getting the object from here. So as far as you see here, so we are getting the this dot data dot code. So basically this dot data data is getting the entire response and we have to get the uh, object for the code. So we, we need to do is, let me check this, show you out. So now we have to get the code as an object. So we can define, we can get the, uh, the value for the access the object with the help of this dot data dot code. And for the message, we're gonna access from the this dot data dot message. All right, so that's super cool. Now let's go back and uh, refresh this and change the uh, data. Um, actually, let's go to, yeah, it's showing the error connection. Yeah, I just forget again to run my server npm start and this gonna run the server and let's refresh back and um, i need to actually edit that yeah so let's let's update the the uh, third one and change that to test and change that to update at the right gmail.com and change that to 500 submits that and it's still showing up an error it says 404 so let's check this out inside my service uh, that I actually it should be not be the post request it should be the put request right so that was actually wrong now if I just go back and change that to new data or just add here update at the right gmail.com change that to 500 this should be some valid name, so give it Harry. All right, now if I just try to submit that, and now you see employee bridge successfully, refresh back, everything remains the same, go to the home page, and you see now the data is updated successfully. All right, so we are good to go for the update. So I hope you guys learn a lot of stuff from here. Now we are left with few more things that I believe deletion, and if I want to make it more um, we, if we are missing few part of things which are essential for the best practices, we might do it. We're, so I, I actually want to do one more stuff in the later part of this video. I don't need those URL to pass again and again, and we, we are gonna do that in the very last part of this video. So I hope you guys love this video. So if you really love this, so don't forget to like and subscribe and share, and I wanna see you in the next part.